Thank you very much. Uh, the Freedom Trial uh, was a trial sponsored by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. Me out. Okay, thank you. The trial design is uh, eligibility patients with diabetes and multivessel coronary artery disease were randomized into multivessel stenting with drug eluting stents and cabbage with or without uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. This was a randomization one to one, and the patients were very significantly and aggressively treated with medical therapy, both groups. In terms of the trial design, this is a superiority trial uh, of seven years with a minimum of two years and a medium of 3.8 years. 1,900 patients divided equally in both groups with 131 centers across the world. The primary outcome, composite of earlier occurring of all-cause mortality, non-fatal myocardial infarction, and non-fatal stroke. And secondary outcomes of significance are the maze of one year death, MI, stroke, and repeat revascularization, and cost effectiveness, which will be presented later. There are 24 people who were part of the committee, experts on trials, experts on intervention, surgical or non-surgical, experts on diabetes and stroke. Uh, here you have the definition of diabetes following uh, the American Diabetes Association. And geographically, these were patients with multivessel coronary disease with severe lesions of at least two major epicardial vessels. Uh, indications for revascularization were actually ischemia uh, or myoca myocardial ischemia or angina. Here you have the inclusion criteria. Exclusion criteria, I don't think we have to go into too much detail. And here we have the definition of uh, diabetes in terms of hemoglobin A1C, less than 7%, target LDL, less than 70 milligrams DL, target blood pressure, 100, less than 130 over 80. Pre-randomization, all qualifying angiograms had to be reviewed by the interventionist and the cardiac surgeon. Here you have some details in terms of cabbage management. Uh, these patients uh, were who had left anterior descending coronary artery, we encourage internal mammary artery revascularization. And then the question is conventional bypass versus off palm cabbage, this was decided by the surgeon. In terms of the interventional pre stent process, all the lesions were looked at very carefully by the uh, interventionalist. And I just want to point out that uh, left main disease was actually excluded. Here we have uh, another aspect, perhaps of interest, that drug eluting stents were used in all patients. And actually, in each particular patient who had intervention with the stents, the same drug eluting stent was used. We have uh, some interventional issues in terms of, uh, of uh, therapy. Oral aspirin, of course, was given, and clopidogrel, anticoagulants. Clopidogrel was discontinued at about one year in most of the cases. The definition of myocardial infarction, I don't have to go into the details. We divided myocardial infarction within the first 30 days and after the first 30 days. The stroke definition, uh, neurological deficit of central origin lasting for more than 72 hours. In terms of the number of patients that enter into the trial, I think it's important to notice that over 100,000 patients were actually looked at, and from these, 10% were randomizable, and from these 10%, 60% enter into the trial, 1,900 patients. Uh, again, in terms of the characteristics, were exactly the same clinically, hemodynamically, and laboratory testing for of both groups and so the medications given in both groups. Now, uh, we are going to touch into perhaps the most important aspect of my presentation today, which is the primary outcome. In red, you have PCI drug eluting stents, 
In yellow, you have cabbage. In the horizontal axis, you have five years of follow-up. In the vertical axis, over 30%. As you can see, there was a significant difference between cabbage and PCI. The event rates at five years in cabbage, in PCI, I'm sorry, was 26.6%, and in cabbage was 18.7%. A, a very, very significant. Here we have the myocardial infarction, which was also significant in favor of cabbage. PCI draculutin stents, the rate of infarction at five years was 13.9, and in the group with cabbage was 6%. Very significant. And here is all cause mortality, which in fact at five years, we have 16.3% in the PCI group and 10.9% in the cabbage group. In terms of a stroke, this was a slightly increase in the group undergoing bypass with 5.2% at five years, and in the PCI, 2.4%. And here you have, in terms of repeat revascularization, at 12 months, 13% with PCI, 5% with cabbage. Actually, we have the data at five years, and it's 30% versus 13%. And here you have the maze, which is the combination of death, uh, stroke, myocardial infarction, and repeat revascularization, which at, five, at 12 months is 17% for PCI, 12% for cabbage. Again, statistically significant. There is a very important issue, and this is the complexity of disease. This is the syntax score. In the upper right, left, a score of less than 22, we have the, inch, the rate of events for the uh, group titer with PCI, 23%, for the group titer with cabbage, 17%. Also significant is the syntax score, 23-32, on the right upper side, 27% event rate uh, for the primary endpoint in PCI, 17% in cabbage. In a, a syntax score of more than 33 also significant difference of 30% for PCI, 22% event rate at five years for the cabbage group. This slide is important because what it shows is that PCI does worse than cabbage in all the uh, prospective subgroups that were analyzed. And with it, each group, all the variables had the same favorable result with cabbage. On the top, for example, is the syntax with the three groups that I presented and all the other groups are below. Let me conclude, uh, and that is that in patients with diabetes and multivessel coronary artery disease, cabbage was of significant benefit as compared to PCI. MI and all-cause mortality were independently decreased, while a stroke was a slightly increased. There was no significant interaction between the treatment effect of cabbage on the primary endpoint according to syntax score or any other pre-specified group, subgroup. Cabbage surgery is the preferred method of revascularization for patients with diabetes and multivessel disease. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Fuster. Uh, to discuss the uh, Freedom Trial, I'd like to call upon Dr. Alice Jacobs uh, from the Boston Medical Center. Thank you. I congratulate Dr. Fuster and his international colleagues and co-investigators on the completion of this important trial. Freedom was designed against the following background. In the United States alone, we know that nearly one million coronary revascularization procedures are performed yearly, and 35% of these procedures are performed in patients with diabetes. We also know that there's a higher incidence of adverse outcomes in patients with diabetes undergoing revascularization. And despite advances in technology, technique, and adjunctive pharmacologic agents, 
Better outcomes with cabbage compared to PCI in patients with diabetes has been reported in prior studies. Freedom was designed and adequately powered with an adequate sample size to compare contemporary cabbage with contemporary PCI in patients with diabetes and was fueled by the contention that drug-eluting stents would negate the advantage of cabbage. When we are asked to analyze the late-breaking clinical trials, it is important to determine whether the question is important in new, the design appropriate, the sample size adequate, the endpoints justified, the conclusions supported by the data, and the applicability or whether or not the trial has the potential to impact clinical practice. Freedom's question was important, although not new. It adds quality data to the existing evidence base. The design was randomized, multi-center, actually international. It was designed as, as a superiority trial. And in the spirit of a comparative effectiveness trial, comparing two efficacious therapies, although it is noteworthy that out of the 32,000 patients screened, only 10% were eligible for enrollment. The sample size um, had 85% power at a two-sided alpha level of 0.05 to detect a relative reduction in event rate of 18%, which was achieved. The endpoints, the primary outcome, a composite of all-cause mortality, non-fatal MI, and stroke at a minimum of two years, appropriate heart endpoints, particularly in light of the fact that the prior study showing an advantage of cabbage was really driven by a decrease in repeat revascularization. The conclusion uh, in terms of the primary endpoint is supported by the data, but it is noteworthy that 83% of patients had triple vessel disease and therefore less than 20% double vessel disease. And in terms of applicability, there is the potential, I think, to change clinical practice. So in perspective, the results of freedom add to the consistent evidence base supporting cabbage as the preferred strategy for patients with diabetes and multivessel disease, the coronary disease. However, it will be important to determine whether the relationship between the primary endpoint curves is maintained with longer-term follow-up as the saphenous vein bypass grafts begin to fail, and whether the continued evolution of new drug-eluting stent technology will diminish the advantage of cabbage is unclear, but it does appear less likely if the mechanism of the effect of cabbage is to protect the myocardium against new disease. And finally, in the 2010 guidelines on myocardial revascularization from the European Society of Cardiology making specific recommendations for diabetic patients, cabbage should be considered rather than PCI, especially with multivessel disease. This is given a class 2A level of evidence B recommendation. And similarly, in the new combined coronary revascularization section embedded in both the United States PCI and cabbage guidelines that were uh, revised in 2011, looking at revascularization to improve survival compared with medical therapy. Again, in patients with multivessel disease who have diabetes, it is reasonable to choose cabbage with a lima over PCI. This, too, receives a class 2A level of evidence B recommendation. And whether, given the totality of evidence, the new data from Freedom will inform a class 1 guideline recommendation, perhaps in patients with triple vessel disease and complex disease, will no doubt be the subject of ongoing debate. Thank you.